Hi, so we're going to get started. Thanks for coming this afternoon to the webinar. We're here to talk about technology and your personal story, how to tell it. Uh, we have several other people that have signed up for the webinar, but I'm not going to uh, wait around for them. They'll show up eventually, I'm sure. And uh, my name is Jordan Chankis. I'm the technologist for Arc of Westchester, which means that I try and let people know that tech can be a powerful tool, one among many, to help a person realize some of their goals. Just one tool. You, know, you can't beat a compassionate human being. I don't think anybody's found the tech to replace that yet. I happen to be the dad of an adult daughter who has uh, multiple disabilities and over the years I've tried many ways to help her have a happy life. I go all the way back to the days of Apple II and trying to uh, see what we could do with that to help Jessie. She now uses an iPad which she calls her iPop and she loves it, absolutely loves it. So during this webinar if you have a question please send me a chat message or raise your hand, make some kind of indication that you have a question. Uh, I welcome questions from everybody because with four million apps out there and uh, Googleplex and the giant world of the web that expands every section, a second, I have yet to find the expert, the one that knows everything. So I'm sure that many of the people on this call have a lot of personal knowledge that they could share. We're recording this webinar and we'll make the recording available after some editing in a couple of days along with some resource listings. They'll be posted to the technology page at our Arc of Westchester website. And if you like this webinar, which I hope you will, please remember that we're doing another one in February, February 27th, I believe the date is, and it's in the next year, 2017, which is unbelievable that it's already here. But, uh, and we're going to be talking about a related topic to our topic today, technology and apps for person-centered planning and transition supports. Telling you the story is the first part of this, and then it gets a little more refined when you actually have to make circles that speak to the person's uh, support network. And so, since 2014, the Ark of Westchester has been exploring how everyday tech like smartphones and tablets can be used to answer some of the functional needs of the people that we serve. And we serve about 2,000 people here at the Ark of Westchester from preschoolers all the way up to guys in their 90s. All different types of developmental disabilities including autism. And we, when we say everyday tech, we also underline the word affordable tech. We're very interested in making everything available to people and not having, if we can do, do away with the dedicated assistive technology devices that are only single purpose and very expensive. In our efforts to explore these kind of tools, we built a network that includes a, lo a local liberal arts college, Mercy College, a sister agency in New York City, AHRC New York, which serves about 8,000 people, and the Westchester Library System. And this year was a pretty monumental step for us. We came up with a Tech Supports for Cognition and Learning conference, which we did in March, and hopefully we're going to repeat it come in this coming May and we have uh, quite a lineup of speakers so I encourage you to check out our technology page on our website. And a very recent partner 
and I see that she's on call from the Coleman Institute, we have uh, been granted one of what they call the DIGS project grants and the funds from that help to make this webinar possible and also our effort to try and get people to understand that technology should be available to everyone. It shouldn't be something for just a select group of people. It's in this day and age, digital literacy, technical literacy is absolutely critical. So let's talk a little bit before we get into the exact subject of today, which is telling your story. Let me give you a little background on the efforts of the Coleman Institute for Cognitive Disabilities. Since 2014, they've been trying to promote a declaration that says that people with cognitive disabilities should have access to technology and information access systems. Everyone should have access. And if you think about the difficulty that some of us without significant disabilities have in negotiating the web, trying to get through Travelocity or book a ticket at a show or whatever, sometimes it can get pretty complicated. Just think of how difficult it is for people with disabilities. Also, the affordability of broadband is an issue, and access to the devices because of the cost of them is also another thing that limits you. So if you go for a job these days, on the job application it's going to say, what is your email? If you can't say what your email is, all of a sudden you go into a different category. This person isn't going to be as useful as we had thought. We're not able to get in touch with them. So this is a critical need. So if you guys, when you get a chance, would go to the Coleman Institute site, you can see the declaration there, read in its regular and also accessible version. And we're looking to have everybody and their brother sign this document. Organizations, people in the field, parents, people with disabilities. If we can get a groundswell of need demonstrated to legislators, perhaps we can get to the next step where we can advocate for the funding to make the web accessible to everybody. And that actual hardware and software comes into the hands of the people that need it and also that those folks get the training. The purpose of a personal story is to have people more fully understand and appreciate an individual for who they are, not what they aren't. And the story should be told directly, not through a caregiver, not through a teacher, not through a parent. You know, all these things are wonderful helps to an individual, but they're all filters that separate the individual from the person they're communicating with. If you think about a caseworker asking something for a person that she represents, a Medicaid service coordinator talking to somebody, that's a filter. A mom or dad interpreting the teacher's instructions for their child, that's another filter. Uh, a job coach talking to the employer about the individual that he's coaching or developing a job for, that's another filter. All very well intentioned, but also the, all of them are a barrier. So where can we use it? We can use it in all different kind of settings. We can use it for uh, meetings about the individual, in school IEP meetings, uh, ISP meetings, uh, virtual resume, uh, telling people about the individual that don't know them at all, and remembering events. How powerful it is, is it to see an individual and not just the paper file that describes the person? Flesh and blood sitting right before you, with pictures to show, words to share, spoken or printed out, literally source material. You have that individual 
right in front of them, in front of you, communicating as best as they can through their voice, through uh, a computer voice, through print, but they're telling their own story. So when you talk about resumes, that's a huge issue for the people that we serve, and everybody knows, you know, the unemployment rate is about 80% and higher for people with developmental disabilities. And if I walk into a job and I have a developmental disability and I've never worked before, well, you know, how am I going to impress that boss, that interviewer, that I'm somebody that they should hire? If they have a personal story with them, perhaps they can talk about their qualities, their honesty, their hard-working nature, the volunteer jobs that they've done, the awards they got in school, all these things that you would not necessarily record on a regular resume. But just because you don't have a job doesn't mean that you don't have a lot of assets. And take the example of somebody that transitions to a new school or moves into a new house, maybe moves out of his uh, own house or goes uh, from a group home to a smaller apartment. You know, how do you have that person understand the neighborhood? You know, uh, how are they going to be able to navigate it? Perhaps you can take storytelling and create a visual map of the neighborhood. Where are the stores located? Where is the bus stop? What is my room going to look like? Where are all the shops? Where are the recreation facilities? You know, what is near my house? I think that would be a tremendous asset to a lot of people transitioning. And also, remembering an event, you know, for me, it's not easy because I'm an old man. But, you know, on top of that, if you have some kind of cognitive impairments besides old age, my goodness, it's hard to remember things. So when you go to the city for a show, you have so many memories of what happens during your visit. But do they stay with you or do they just disappear? So uh, you can create, after you come back, a story about your trip to New York or maybe a trip to see your parents down in Florida or, you know, your first uh, travel on an airplane by yourself. All these are incredibly good memories to share. And the benefits. I guess one of the biggest things that we can talk about is self-expression. You're hearing from the individual. You're hearing from them and not just waiting for the expert to tell you something. And again, I know these are all good intention people. I'm a parent and I advocate for my daughter all the time. But let's see if we can have the individual communicate with whatever means possible. For so many years in school, you have the teachers, your guidance counselors, everybody is talking to you you don't get as much chance to talk back and tell them about yourself. And, you know, somebody that is developing literacy, it's great to do the routines and all that, but how much easier and more important it is to learn how to use words, learn how to spell if the subject matter is you. And another big benefit of a digital and technology storytelling um, use is you can constantly update it. So you might take a snapshot of your life today, but boy, you know, lots can change in your future. How do we make this happen? First piece of advice, take small bites. Don't try and bite off more than you can. Try and tell one story, not everything that's happened in your life. You have to decide on the purpose. Why are you doing this story? Is it to talk about 
what uh, qualities you have so that you can tell the folks at an IEP or ISP meeting what your strengths are, what you need help with. You know, why are you doing it? Are you getting ready to uh, meet an employer and you want to talk about your positive aspects? Are you uh, trying to remember a special event that uh, you attended? You know, why are you doing this story and who is the audience? The audience that you would have in a CSE meeting or an ISP meeting are very different from an employer. You would address them differently. And especially with an employer, your pitch is really, how can I help you? Whereas in an ISP meeting, it's, how can you help me and give me the needed supports in my life? So you have to adjust your presentation. Next is to gather photos that show you in various situations that you think you want to share. Please, you know, if you need the help, ask people to help you edit the pictures, crop them, make them look the best that they can, and take ones that really show what you're trying to convey. Uh, if they, the existing photos you have don't do anything, take some new ones. If you don't have a smartphone or an iPad or some other digital recording device, I'm sure there's other people that could help you out. And are you going to narrate the piece? Are you, do you have the kind of voice that could be understood by everybody? If you can't have, uh, if it's not easy for folks to understand you, Perhaps you would like somebody else to record the speech for you, or you're happy with your own voice and just supplement it with the printed word. But that's a big decision. Are you going to have to record things? Some apps and some technology allow you to do it better than other ways. And then focus on one piece of tech and learn it and use it before you move on to the next one. We'll be talking a bit about PowerPoint and a Pictello, a very popular iPad app, but there's lots of other ones out there. But I think it's best just to focus on one at a time and see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. So along with gathering the photos, gathering the information that you're going to need this is a little template that I found very helpful just to get to take a, like a thumbnail sketch of somebody where you ask them, who are you? What do you like? What do you really dislike and hate? And what is your dream? And I've used this for quite a few years. I've never had anybody in the first column say, I am disabled. They'll say, I am a brother, I am a sister, I'm a cousin, a nephew, I'm a singer, I'm a dancer, I'm a, a video game player, whatever. And, you know, if you talk about love, love of family, I love my pets, I love my girlfriend, and, you know, hey, what do you, don't you like to do? How important is that if you're going for a job interview? And somebody asks you, well, would you like to help arrange the shopping carts in the supermarket parking lot? And you say, sure, but you realize you hate being out in cold weather. That's probably not the job for you. So it's important for you to know what you don't like. And what is your dream? You know, a, a dream is something that could be very close or it could take a while to get there. But, you know, it's, it's nice to have short-term goals, long-term goals, kind of what do you want for your future? Sometimes a lot of us can't get the, our ideal position right away, or sometimes we never get it and it winds up being just a avocation, something that we do part-time but still enjoy. But what is our goal? And it might be a job, but it could be as simple as I want to learn to travel independently, I want to learn to cook, I want to get my own apartment. I want to uh, move into a smaller group home. I want a girlfriend. I want a boyfriend. 
I want to travel. I want to go on vacation. I want to learn photography. Whatever it is, it's good to have a goal. So this is a great exercise. It's such a simple template, but it's really, really powerful. And I've done this in classrooms where I'll have 30 guys start talking about themselves, and next thing you know, the whole blackboard is filled with uh, answers to these questions. So get your photos, but also get this as a background to the text and the general purpose of your presentation. So selfishly and practically, let's talk about Jessica, who happens to be my daughter. She lives at home with us, and hopefully in the not-too-distant future, she'll be able to get a place of her own and not have to be around old farts all the time. <laughs> so let's just take a look at Jess, but first let's look at Jessie from the old clinical cold view. So Jessica is an adult woman. She's low functioning. Don't you hate that word? <laughs> low functioning. She suffers from ataxic CP. She has unstable balance. She has communication difficulties. She has limited self care skills and she has a history of seizures. Holy smokes, this is a complicated situation. And if you read just this, I don't know. I would be a little bit nervous getting to meet Jessica. But then let's turn things around and go for a strength-based assessment. Here's the big picture about Jess. So she's going to be 38 this coming January. If you ask her sometimes, she'll say she's four years old, but we're working on having her understand 38, and she uh, loves to count down the beds up until her birthday. She measures everything in beds. So this is her 37th birthday, fresh from a nice bath and having her birthday cake. Here's my mom and dad. Her dad is with a computer. Her mom is smiling, which is often the case. I have a brother named Justin. Last year he married Abby, and they now live in Vermont. And you could have a whole other slide just on Jesse going to the wedding and being part of the whole ceremony. I have lots of aunts uncles and cousins. I like spending time with them, especially the good-looking young cousins. And I like lots of things. Sure, I have challenges, but I like lots of things like baths. I love babies, dogs. I go horseback riding. I like baseball. I like going to baseball games and also playing baseball at the Miracle League which is an accessible baseball field in Westchester, New York. I like going out to eat. I like Curious George. This is Curious George in Boston at the Curious George store. And I like being very silly, evidenced by the bunny rabbit ears. I get around with my walker, and for long trips, I have a wheelchair that I can push myself with. So this tells you a lot about Jesse that you would not get just from a clinical description, and that is really essential. With Jesse, hopefully in the near future, getting a place of her own, I would love to have staff see this instead of seeing a person with all the deficits and all the support needs. First, let's think about what makes Jesse great, what makes her special in this world, that uh, she's a great person to get to know. So 
it's a good example of just using something really simple. It would be great to use it in an IEP meeting and tell everybody, yes, you know, this is uh, the student that has all these uh, therapies and all this, but this is the human being. In uh, an MSC situation where you're at the ISP meeting and you're trying to talk about yourself, it's good to remind people that you have a lot of strengths, not just, you know, things that you need support with. So once you kind of have a general format and focus and you bring the elements together, the photos, the text, uh, and you assemble them, then you have to decide, well, what's the technology that you're going to use? In many cases, uh, you know, uh, ease of use is a function of how much we can give in the way of supports. Uh, what kind of computers are available? You know, Windows machines, uh, Apple, you know, do we have Android devices? A lot of great applications now, great software is becoming web-based, where it's basically, doesn't matter what platform you have, as long as you have a browser, you can use it. And remember that there's going to be a viewer of this information that you're creating, somebody that's going to read your story. So you have to think about privacy. Do you want everybody to read your story or do you want just want a targeted audience? That, you know, you have to be careful with because there's some uh, files that you want to keep private and secret. You don't want just to be put out to a general web posting. And sustainability. You know, will the product be regularly updated? I was putting together last summer a recipe book for one of the self-advocates that I deal with. He's a great cook, and I went over to his house and took tons of pictures and started assembling it into a slideshow program, uh, an app that I got uh, for the iPhone. <clears throat> Halfway through the project, the developer stopped developing and he closed shop. So you want to get products that have been around for a while that are regularly being updated. I looked at uh, one today, uh, Story Mill. It's a good product. It's nice and simple, but it hasn't been updated, updated since 2010, which is a long time in the world of technology. So you want stuff that is going to be around for a long time, and then you want to be able to take your story and share it with the person, hopefully in its original form, especially if you're going to do a narration. You know, you can't get the narrations in a PDF, but a uh, multimedia file like MP4, you can get all the narration. Or if you're on the, a web-based piece of software, you can uh, get all the features. But you want to be able to share it with people, like an employer, like a CSE committee, and you want to make sure that it isn't just a format that only exists on one part of uh, the web or at a particular developer. PowerPoint, you know, sometimes it's a pain in the neck, but boy, it's a powerful program. And the nice thing about it, it's available everywhere. As long as somebody has office, the odds are pretty good that they have PowerPoint in their office suite. And with a little help, you know, everybody can pretty well use it. I know a school down in uh, Lower Westchester where the teacher, the, a class of life skills students, every student that she has, and she has about 30, each one of them has their own PowerPoint presentation that they show when they go to their IEP session and uh, the stories, they're not long, but they talk about assets, they talk about things the person wants to do in the future. And PowerPoint, it's available in Windows, it's available on the app, uh, Apple platform, it's available on uh, smartphones, Apple smartphones and on tablets. And you can get a lot of templates, a lot of things that had been developed already if you just search under Google for, uh, say, like transitioning stories. 
you'll find tons of things that people have already developed that you may be able to leverage off of. And it's always nice to have, you know, somebody, an expert around, but you don't want stuff to be too, too complicated, but it's nice to have a program that has a lot of richness to it so that if you do want to record a narration that that's a possibility. Pictello, I mentioned this in our prior uh, webinar when we were talking about scheduling kind of software and you can use it for a lot of different purposes. It's based on the iPad platform. It's very simple to do. You basically just uh, do a lot of touching of moving uh, pictures around. Very, very easy to develop a story and you can have videos, you can have audio, you can have all kinds of things in a uh, Pictello file. One of the uh, things that's a little difficult about Pictello is that unless you export it as a PDF, as a printed document, you can only share it if you, if the user, if the person that's going to views it, view it has Pictello on their end. Uh, they have a server at Pictello where you can upload your story and then if somebody else has Pictello, at most teachers, most schools will have it. So in the school environment, it's okay. Once you get outside of the protective school environment, though, it may be difficult because the user has to have the app. But uh, it's still very powerful. It's been around forever. The uh, same people that did Pictello uh, did a very popular uh, communication app, ProloQuo. And uh, so it's something to look at. I'm just going to play a quick YouTube video that will give you an example. It's on a younger kid of about how it was used. And hopefully this link works. Okay, Fanny, you want to show me this? this, this. Kid in story. story. Here you can turn it around. There, here's our story about Disney World. What we what, what we will do at Disney World. Do you see yourself in that picture? At Disney World, we will go on many fun rides. Some rides will fly. Some rides will spin. Some rides we can drive ourselves. That looks like fun, huh? Some rides are shows where we sit in seats to laugh and clap. Does that look like a fun one? When we are in Disney World, you have to stay close to Mommy and Daddy. Sometimes we will have to wait in lines before going on the ride. We will stay calm and quiet while we wait. At Disney World, there are many characters to meet. Are you excited about that part? Yep. An autograph is when they sign their name for you in a book. We might have to wait in a line to meet characters. Or they might come say hello to us while we are eating. We will smile, cheese, to take a picture with the characters. So you get an idea of what you can do with it. It's not a bad thing if somebody's going to uh, start a job just to give a person a layout of the uh, work site, show the person who the supervisors are, who the fellow employees are, what the routines of the day are. You can make a story about anything, but it's pretty simple. Again, it's dedicated to the uh, Apple platform, the uh, smartphone and uh, iPad platform. So it's a little bit limiting, unfortunately. And I'd urge you to check some of these web-based apps out. In doing, in preparing this uh, webinar, I came across these. These both came out in 2016. Adobe Spark and Microsoft Sway. And they have similarities, but these are both free. And they're based in the web, and you can also get downloads, uh, smaller versions for smartphones and tablets. And what it allows you to do is to take a variety 
of still and video clips and make a story using those clips and then post it to the Adobe or the Microsoft site. Adobe has more flexibility regarding um, recording narration. The Microsoft Sway, it is very new, it doesn't have a lot of sophistication regarding uh, recording individual uh, uh, slides. It's sort of like you can make a soundtrack for the whole thing. So that's something that they're working on to improve that app. But they're both incredibly resourceful. And if you think that uh, you have trouble showing a employer your resume, if it's on this kind of web-based system, as long as he has a browser, you know, you can access it. It's password protected as far as you getting into your account to change it. I haven't looked that carefully into the privacy uh, items. You always want to be careful with that. This has the ability to post uh, the slideshows to Facebook and other social media and you know you'd have to be careful because you don't want everybody knowing your business. So, but as far as the kind of programs that they're offering for free, it's pretty amazing. And you can access it directly on the web on your desktop computer and then you can do little tweaks via your smartphone or your tablet. So I'd really, really recommend looking at these two items. And then we have an old standby, uh, iMovie. I'm not spending too much time on iMovie just because, yes, you can use it for a presentation, but it's fairly complicated. You can take individual pictures and put them into a, a movie slideshow, but, you know, it requires a bit of sophistication in the editing. They're wonderful programs and they can be exported to files that can be read by anybody, but still an individual is going to need some assistance to make it work. And Videolicious is an app that you can download from the App Store and it's primarily video based where you take a variety of clips and you shoot them from your iPhone or from your iPad and then you assemble them all together via this app and then you can post it to social media sites. So it has a lot of power. I think there's some issues regarding privacy on it and making sure that uh, your, all your interests are protected. So going back to this whole analysis, I don't know about you, I come out to some standard applications like PowerPoint. In the world of Apple, there's Keynote, but it's not as widely used. So, you know, PowerPoint and Pictello, those are the ways to go. And the only thing that will limit your story really is just your imagination. And if we can encourage this, instead of having all the analysis done on an individual via text, via written reports, via things that give you no clue who this person is, it'll be a great accomplishment. So next time, you know, if you're an MSC and you're working with somebody and it's a chance for you to say, you know, I want to show this guy playing a piano or I want to show this guy, you know, telling jokes or whatever, just to give some humanity to the situation. I, I remember when my Jessie left high school and she was in her first program and a very earnest uh, social worker, she addressed us at Jessie's first case review and she, you know we live in a rural section of Westchester, we don't have um, regular street addresses, we just have post office boxes where the mail comes. So everybody has to schlep to the post office. So this nice social worker, a lovely lady, said that Jessica Jankis lives at post office box 374 in Crompon, New York. 
And I told them, no, she decided to move. It was too crowded. It was too uncomfortable in there. And of course, you know, I was being funny, but to make a point, this is a human being. Nobody lives in a post office box. They live with their family. They live with somebody. So again, bringing the reality of the human being back to casework, back to the school setting is so important. And at the same time that we're doing that, people with disabilities can learn a lot of literacy skills, a lot of just organizational skills and thinking skills. So I would highly recommend it. I thank you for your attendance and your interest and your participation.